That'll be enough of that. This is my show, and Sorry. not too many bits of applause for people who just come on and perform. Now, the young ones seem to divide... No Ooh. spot. No <laughs> place. <laughs> not mine, honest. That's what you say. Oh, God. They don't look any better in your trousers, do they? <laughs> the young ones seem to, and taking my own family as an indication, seem to divide the country right down the middle. The young ones delighted the youthful population yeah. and it seemed to alienate the adults. Well, that's not what we aimed for. We tried to get... We thought if we made it about students, everybody's got an attitude towards students. Like, young people think they're going to be one or they think they're not going to be one or old people think they used to be one. And everybody hates them anyway. So, so we thought uh, it would appeal to everybody, but it seems it's mainly, well, most, mostly the letters that we get mm. are from younger people. Well, I think um, older people, the older generation, I'm, I'm pretty young myself. I yes, love Terry. it. I love it. But uh, th that's my glass of water you drink. <laughs> I wonder why it was spilled. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do you see yourself? Or you, you didn't set out then to be crusaders for youth or anything? No, not at all. I just think, well, we're not really very youthful anymore. Mm. I mean, I'm 26 and some of the others are going on for 30. So, uh, Did you, I mean, are, are you happy of being put into that position or would you have preferred a more general appeal? Well, it's a nice start. I mean, it's a great start. Then hopefully, if we carry on doing things, then gen eventually we'll have general appeal. Yeah, whoever he is. Would you become a kind of, you become a kind of cult hero, don't you? Uh, well, that's that's what, that's what they say. I don't really know what that. Means. Oh, I'm sure that's true about the young ones. I mean, certainly, all the young people seem to be in the same way as they used to imitate the goons. They seem to imitate you. Yeah. And and the other members of the team. I mean, I re I remember when I was at school loving the Pythons, and. Uh, or in the playground the next day, we'd all be going through all Python routines and things. Um, that's something we tried to aim at with the show, was to try and make it as exciting as the Pythons were to us when we were when Well, we were as, far, as far as the younger generation is concerned, I'm certain you succeeded that way. But they say the young ones is finished now. Well, yeah, th that's for a mixture of reasons. I mean, we, well, we've, we've got a book coming out. <clears throat> a slim volume, isn't yes, it? Yes, slim volume, very cheap. Um, and that's, in a sense, the third series, because that's all new material. But uh, what we thought we'd do is try and... It's not because we're lazy or anything, it's just we wanted to move on and do something else. Because the first series of The Young Ones was very exciting for a lot of people, and the second one, although I think better made and better performed, didn't have the same shock impact. So if we write something new, then it'll, uh, it'll have a better appeal. But don't you think it's a bit too soon to break up? I mean, I always well, think... Well, we're not breaking up. I mean, it'll be the same writing team and the same performers and everything, just doing a different, slightly different format. So it will be The Young You're Ones You're going to move then. away from the characters, though? That you've yes, created. ish. Yes, I mean, although, I mean, Aid tends to always play... Well, no, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he always tends to play loud, yeah. violent types, and I always tend to play... It's pranks. just, I think performers sometimes... <laughs> you paid. I think performers sometimes get tired of playing a role long before the public gets tired of seeing you do it. Yeah, I think... I it's... always think it's about two years later that the public are going to get tired of you. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably true, although the public expect to have um, as good a show as the first one, or as good a show as the best one every single time. <clears throat> And I think you get the best work out of doing new things. So you're going to try and shock them in a new way? Well, make them laugh more than last time, hopefully. So you're not out really to shock or make them outraged? Mm. What are you seeking to do with, with the... Just make it as exciting as the Pythons were. I mean, I remember watching, watching the Pythons and being so disappointed when half an hour was over. Because they really used the television set really well. Anything could happen. That's what we tried to do with the young ones. Tried to get three strands of sitcom variety and, uh, say, review, review shows. And, bang them all in together so that you didn't know what to expect really, so it's exciting. They were, Python was very surrealistic. The, the young ones, are they based on real people? I think, I mean, it's your... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're grotesque, they're caricatures. Uh, I, think, I think it's very, it's a very traditional show, really. There's lots of slapstick, lots of shouting. It's a very traditionally British show. I mean, I think it's probably got similarities to The Crazy Gang as much as anything else. Your character, that based on anybody you know, apart from yourself? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's mainly me. I think I used to be like that when I was about 13 or so. <laughs> you weren't, were you? Yeah, we, the whole thing started because I, I was up at Edinburgh in 79 and there were some really terrible poets on. Um, really, really crap they were. And, <laughs> God, for anyone watching, you're crap. <laughs> so I thought, just, just for fun, we, we, we wrote out some poems and I just went out on stage and, and did them as straight as I could and people started laughing so I shouted at them to shut up and... Uh, and, and that character just came out from inside. Was that the show that was called Death on the Toilet? 
Though that was a... <laughs> yes, I was responsible for that. Yes. No, we, we, that was at lunchtime we used to do that and make lots of money. Then we used to drink all day and then go on in the evening in a cabaret and just doing little turns, you know. <laughs> Turn around, fall over, basically. <laughs> what, what kind of reaction have you had from, from your own parents? Very supportive. Mum and Dad are both, uh, both kind of drama-type people anyway. Mm. So, they're, I mean, they're happy as long as I'm happy, I think. Hello, you Mom. you Hello, don't Dad. get people stopping in the street to tell you they think you're a bad influence on the young. No, I get people stopping me in the street and saying, oh, hello, you're Rick, aren't you? And I turn around and say, hello, and they say, oh, well, they're very disappointed you know, that I'm not Because you don't funny. look like that all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Do they, people expect you to go straight into the character the minute they meet you? No, they, I think a lot of people think you actually are like that. It was even worse with Kevin Turvey, when I did a character called Kevin Turvey. Yes, he was the, he was the investigative journalist, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, and people used to expect you to talk like this all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were really disappointed when Kevin wasn't real. <clears throat> Where did you pick him up? Well, I come from around that area. I mean, it's not based on any particular person. It's just a sort of... It's an accent and a mood, I think, from southwest Midlands. Yeah, your parents, as you say, were in the, in the dramatic business. You yourself, did you set out to be a straight actor? I never really set out to be, be anything. I mean, I'm only doing... I'm doing the only thing I can do. I can't drive, I can't... don't know anything about engines or electricity or anything. It's all I can do is just... <laughs> just uh, walk around and have people laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shame. <laughs> didn't, you once, didn't you once play Shakespeare? Yeah, but um, I got a laugh off every line by the end of the tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was in, in 78. We did a three-month tour of America in the Comedy of Errors. And uh, I lost two stone while I was out there. Did about 88 performances in three months in America. Did you? Yeah. Good. How did you find America responded? Would you, would you like to do well, it was, what you're it, doing in America? Would you like to translate it, the young ones, and those ideas to an American audience or to a more international audience? Or do you think only a British audience would accept it? Um, I don't know. I think probably it's... I mean, America, the American situation on American television is, from what I hear, is, is really, really restrictive, the moral majority and everything. It's very hard to, to even say bum. You, know. you can't say it here either. I know. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> so, you can't say that. So I, I think it probably wouldn't translate anyway. There's a different sense of humour. I mean, Australia, someone like that, I think it'd probably do very well. Yeah. You seem to be attracted by, um, by the bad guys of comedy, by the, by the Oliver Hardys rather than the, the Stan Laurels. Why yeah. is that? It's just what makes me laugh, I think. I mean, I love W.C. Fields, people like that. It's the cruel ones, the ones that make me laugh. There's, there's some theory that, that laughing is actually uh, bearing, bearing your teeth. Uh, it's like if you've got a, a pack of dogs, say, wild dogs this is, and one of them's ill, then they'll all snarl at that one to make him go away. And someone wrote somewhere that, uh, that the laugh is a civilised snarl. When you see something or some member of society that you disapprove of, then you bear your teeth. I mean, there's no actual explanation for actually bearing your teeth and laughing if it's not a civilised snarl, if it's not growling at some piece of illness to make it go away, something that might disease the pack. And so I think when you see someone fall over on a banana skin, everyone laughs as if to say, uh, we're not the kind of people who fall over on banana skins. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I think that's probably, probably quite uh, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Do you find... Uh, young people tend to laugh at more cruel humour than older people. No, I think young people have got a kind of livelier sense of humour, maybe. I mean, it's no insult to them, not, no insult to anybody. I think younger people have always been more responsive, responsive to more energetic new things, I suppose. Mm. I mean, look at rock and roll, you know. You went into what is called the alternative comedy, which I know you don't much like that description. Well, I don't think anybody does. I think that was, that was invented by the press, really, just to compartmentalise us, which is a shame. I mean, everybody gets compart. You've got, you've got the Not The Night Clock News people, the Pythons, the Goons. It'd be good if you could somehow mix it all up. And if you had a sketch with Aid and Milligan, for example, or... Or whoever, just, just mix it up more. It'd be nice to have the opportunity to work with other people. Why I, worked, you... I worked with Cannon and Ball the, the other yeah. week, and that was just great fun. It was brilliant. Why do you think that, that uh, an older audience would be offended? As some of, them, some of them were by both the language and the... They claimed to be disgusted by some of the stuff they saw on the young ones. I'm sure they are. I mean, we certainly didn't set out that way. I just put it, we just put in the stuff that made us laugh, and I think that's all we can do is just... If you're trying to work out what other people's sense of humour is and try and yes, you give can't them please, what they think they want. True. You can't please yeah. all the people all the time. Now, you created two characters that I remember, probably you've created many more, but Kevin Turvey and Rick Mayle. Have you got another one sort of fermenting? Well, in the third series, I think we're all going to try and uh, work out something that's more fundamental, more long-lasting, maybe. 
I mean, it'd be great to have something like, say, Hancock had just had a character of his own that was so near to himself, he was able to play that. Well, would you like situation? to set up a kind of little repertory company that would enable you to go on and, and run as long as Monty Python ran? Yeah, but I'd, as I say, I'd like it to include every comic that's, that's still around. When you, when you mature yes. and become... Um, as old as Tim. Richard Mayle, as old as Ian Botham. Yes. Yes. Spotty. Spotty, Ian Botham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going into the dressing room after this. <laughs> Will you, do you think, would you mind going into a situation comedy yourself? A no, kind of Richard, all, latter day Richard Briars. Well, Felicity Kendall's in it. I'll go for it. Yes, I don't mind. Very sexist. <laughs> Rick Mayle, thank you. Thank you, Terry.